Martin from Guitarist Magazine. I'm Richard Barrett. And today we're here to talk about and do some sounds on the new Eric Johnson Thin Line Strat, which uh, is the one that Richard's holding. I'm holding this one because it's the one I used as, as the kind of control when I reviewed that in the magazine. So it's just here to show if you agree with our comparisons. So um, the interesting thing about the Eric Johnson Thin Line is that oh, he's, he's got a hole in it, he's got an F hole in it. And essentially what they did, Eric told us, was that it's all older, the body's older, and there's a cap on it, that, that's a, a, a semi-acoustic construction, so it's got an older cap on it. And inside there are a couple of chambers, there's one that goes along the top with the F-hole, there's one that goes on the bottom, uh, and Eric said that what they did was they experimented, experimented with the different widths of block down the centre, uh -huh. and they ended up with one going right from here, right to the end, and it's four or five inches wide, so it's about that wide. So it's wide enough for the pickups to sit in, yep. it's wide enough for the bridge to, to sit on solidly. So that's basically it. Obviously, you, what do you think about the weight compared to? It's very nice, actually. It's balanced, um, you know, it's not neck heavy, but uh, I, I think that that is a nice thing. I'm not necessarily somebody that always goes for light guitars, no. but it is kind of nice when you pick this up and yeah. realise. I mean, this is a kind of medium weight Strat, and, and I, I ordered this from the custom shop, and I asked for, I said, I don't want a silly light Strat, but I don't yeah. want a, a lump of brick around my neck. So this is kind of a medium weight, but that's lovely to hold in the hand. I, I, when, I, when I played it, I put it on a strap, and it's really comfortable around the neck. And if you're doing long, long gigs, then it's a, a absolute... Well, absolutely. I was going to say a working guitar player, yeah. like a you know, six hour rehearsal or something and yeah, come away feeling absolutely. vaguely human. Well, the other thing that we both agreed on just now was that was how well it's made. It's just Fender are on song at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're on a roll, yeah. Yeah, it's really beautifully made. There's, there's nothing about it that you'd criticise. That You know, the fit of the neck. In, in the old days, you'd get, you know, two business cards down the middle of a, a 70s. <laughs> yeah, or line. some of them, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah, the construction details, like the, the tuners, the no string tree. Yeah, if you look at that, it's really, really nice. It's a really lovely little thing. They've, they've got staggered tuner posts, so these are quite a, a lot lower than that one, which means that you get a break angle over the nut for this string, so you don't need this bit of kind of Heath Robinson metalwork that we are all used to, but yeah. is a bit, you know, it's not exactly elegant, is it? But it works, which was what Leo Fender was all about, you know, making something work. Yes. But it's an elegant thing. It's, um, well, it's quarter sawn maple neck. Um, yeah which makes it very rigid. This is also quarter saw maple neck. It makes them very rigid, and uh, it, uh, the, the Fender's Custom Shop, they actually can almost tune guitars by the woods that they use and whether they're quarter sawn or flat sawn necks. Um, but what, what do you think about it as a, player, as a player's guitar? Um, I think that uh, it's extremely well thought out as a player's guitar. I mean, I would probably have it set up slightly differently here, but what we have is a kind of guitar that's a nice lightweight, it's got a teeny bit more brightness than the standard Strat, hasn't yes. it? Because, yeah. well, all other things being equal, which they really are, of course, but uh, 300k pots, I believe, in that, which just lets that little bit more high in through. So, but you can tame the bridge pickup with the tone control, which is, you know, a really popular yeah. mod, isn't it, for good yeah. reason. The mid pick, middle pickup on that isn't affected by any tone control, so that's it's wide open all the through. time. So on your on your um, positions two and four, you get the middle pickup wide open all the time, which does really lend a lovely spanky sound to it. Yes, yeah, and I would bet Eric Johnson particularly likes that. Well, he does. If you listen to Ed, Eric's chord work, it's always really, really shimmery and clean. So he likes a very bright bridge pickup. But of course, what the clever thing about what he does is he puts a, a, a tone control on the bridge pickup, so you you can tame it back to kind of almost SG like. Uh, Tone, yes, tones. I, yeah. I, I do it with this as well. Mm. So, you know, you can do an Angus Young open A chord and it sounds it sounds really, really nice. Yeah, it will cover that territory, won't it? Yeah. So. I like, I mean, the F hole's been a contentious thing because some people don't like it. And I have to say, when I first saw the guitar, I didn't really like it. But it does really grow on you. And, I, and it, it, 
in the flesh and, and actually holding it and having played it, yeah, it's grown on me. I was yeah. a, a little kind of, yeah. what's that yeah. about? Yeah, no, at first. Eric told us that, that what you get with this, and we'll try and do it here, um, but obviously we're in an in enclosed space and we, we might not be able to do it really effectively, is, is when you get the guitar cranked up, um, like a 335, if, you know, Eric loves 335s, on a 335 you know that if you get it cranked up, it starts to do something else. Sing. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> and he says that does the same, and he says it starts to go, starts to feed back a bit, and you can control it mm. because it's such a, you know, it's such a controllable guitar. And, you know, like Jeff Beck, you know, he's, he's always riding the controls, and that's what oh, Eric yeah, says about yeah. that. So we'll try and do that. Sorry to do all the talking, but oh, um, no, no, just out of interest, I'm using my own blues, Blues Junior here, so because Eric loves a Fender amp, and this is a Friedman Dirty Shirley, which is a 40 wattish kind of Marshall. It's built around a Marshall tone, so we've got a Marshall tone and, and a Fender tone here, just to give you an idea. A little bit like so, Eric's rig, yeah. So, do you want to do some sounds on that through the Friedman, there, Rich? Let's have a look. <laughs> Just a brief through the yeah. pickup. Yeah, just out of interest, I'll unplug my Strat, play similar kind of thing from that so people can listen to it more or less one after the other. Uh -huh. right, I'll maxing all the controls yeah. on this one this as is well. A little, this is a little bit darker all round than this. Yeah, I think you'll... <laughs> Quite a different sounding guitar, I think. Yeah. I think you'll agree. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I ordered that specifically to be a dark strat. I said to the guys at the Fender Custom Shop, "So, can you think more Rory Gallagher than Mark Knopfler?" And you know, so it is. It's a dark sounding guitar. And it's because I wanted that. Eric likes his bright, so this is deliberately brighter. It's not an accident, or or better or worse for it. It's just this is tuned to be like it is. Yes. So I'm thinking that the the shopper going out to buy a strat that likes the Eric Johnson type tone or a brighter Strat tone, but wants the ability to tame it down, will find a more consistent, um, consistently bright uh, guitar. Exactly, Looking just let that. me pick this up, because do you want to swap back to guitar? Oh, so yes, indeed. A bit of, uh, I'll give you. And I suppose, I should point out, I know it's obvious, but um, to save anyone the trouble of uh, writing in, that we're aware, yeah, Rosewood board will be slightly uh, less bright as well. Definitely. Okay, we've had a bit of a play. Now Richard's just going to talk you through the nuts and bolts of the guitar and things that are interesting about it and things that he's noticed about since he's been playing it. And pick me up on anything I that will. Uh, I'm incorrect about. Okay. But uh, we've already mentioned these tuners, yeah. which go down in the slope, so it eliminates the need for a string tree, which I would imagine is also a good thing for tuning. Um, One less element to, of friction, isn't it? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, and as far as kind of modern tweaks go. I like the 12 inch radius board, uh, though they haven't gone with a big chunky Gibson type wire, just no. the, the Gibson type radius. I like that. Yeah, Means I think they're kind of um, medium oval or medium, medium tall. They're yes. sort of like halfway between this, which is I, I think a 6100 fret because it's quite big and, and a vintage fret, so, which is quite small. And, and that's a nice compromise, I think. Yes, absolutely. Um, Got the tone control for the bridge pickup, the middle yeah. pickup coming straight through. It ships with the uh, bridge flat to the body and five springs. So that's yeah. a, obviously, as everyone knows, an easy, um, an easy fix if you want to have a floating bridge. Yeah. Um, Eric's logo on the maker's nameplate, which is quite neat actually. I like that. Yeah, cartoon-like yeah. thing. It is cool actually, and you'll see that there are no screw holes. Here, which yeah. is kind of nice. Every strat or tremolo guitar, vibrato, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah. guitar that I've ever owned, I've taken the plate off because it's just a hassle to have to keep taking them M off. Mine's got screw holes in it because I took yeah. the plate off. That doesn't have them. So, I mean, I personally don't mind that because it feels really rock and roll. Yeah, exactly. But it's nice to have 
this pristine with no holes. Eric says they sound better that way and uh, I kind of tend to believe things that Eric says because he's got <laughs> yeah, he's... You know, bats ears. Yes, I've never heard him and thought, oh, that doesn't sound very good. No, so exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you've got to, you've got to understand that this is built around a, for a guy who knows about tone, like really knows about tone. Well, and has had access to vintage instruments, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. I like how they've tinted the neck a bit so it's not all pure white. Yes, um, yeah. And I think, I think that colour combo is really nice, although on Eric's website he's got one this colour, which I think looks lovely, but, a pet, but it's only available at the moment in uh, this colour, this, this uh, off vintage creamy white and two-tone sunburst. The two-tone sunburst, like is 54. Yeah, exactly. And it's got um, a single-ply plate, yep. a guard, and apparently these pickup screws. The screw holes are countersunk, which yes. apparently gives better transfer of sound the bent the bent steel saddles the the classic type yeah. but like this this is a they're both vintage style um, stainless steel I think blocks um, yeah I mean it's an interesting thing that that sonically I mean you know as as well as I know and everybody who plays strats know that this strat sounds different to that strat which sounds different to the next strat even an identical rosewood board like exactly, that exactly exactly yeah. so how different that sounds to the next strat because of its f-hole mm. you can't really tell because there's more difference about this guitar the fact that it's got a big slab of, of rosewood on it is going to make it sound diff different what we basically need is for fender to send about half a dozen of these down on um, <laughs> semi-permanent in every color we'll compare yeah, them yeah 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 good idea good idea but, uh, in all the colors yes yeah so so i don't i don't know if we can even try and do that thing where you this guitar to start feeding back. Uh, uh, shall we try it? Yes. Shall we I'm get near the that. amp and see if see if we'll, it will do it? I don't know. There you go. I'll crank me luck. To, uh, to about four. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Now we're in a in a room in a building, and that's quite loud in here. It's not really really loud. Eric is going to be moving tons of air on stage, with big hundred watt marshals and fenders really working hard. So mm -hmm. amplify that, magnify that several times. Yes, and you can see yeah. what he means. Um, it's starting to do that thing a three three five does where it. Absolutely, yeah. It's not all about the note going into feedback necessarily. I'm not sure how much of that is what Eric is after with it, but that responsive feel, which is only really if you've got your hands on the guitar. Yeah, well, it, the, what, what we always say in reviews of 335s compared to a Les Paul is that the less wood in the body tends to make the guitar more dynamic, so you get mm. a bit more spank out of it. Yeah. But then when you do crank it up, it takes on the life of its own, built around the fact that it is semi-acoustic yes. and it wants to feed back with, with the amp. So I think what Eric's saying is pretty much demonstrated as, as true there. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, and it feels and very lively. You feel it through the body again. What about the tone? I mean, yeah, that's really <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah, I would like to do a gig with this. Yeah, yeah. A four hour gig. Yeah, all right. Well, I suppose <laughs> I could. I mean, my ears might hurt, but my back would be okay. <laughs> that's, tr that's true. <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, What's your over overall feeling? We'll turn back and face the um, face the world. Going back round. Yeah, I mean at the kind of price point of of this as well, which is, I mean, a pleasant surprise was the term that was coming in. I suppose it's all relative, but it's not a top dollar guitar. But it really does have, you know, things like the tuners, like the, the way there's yeah. quarter sawn neck, the pickups themselves. I mean, a lot of R and D went into those. Yeah. Exactly, and even, indeed the neck shape. You know, it's it's not a five minute job to to make and try x number mm. of, of necks, especially of a guy like Eric's stature. You know, it's it's not a five minute job. It's it's a it's a bit of R and D. Um, 
UK price, that's about £2,100. Uh, I don't know what that is in dollars and other, other uh, currencies. This guitar off the shelf in, in a shop, just, just a relic, is going to be about 3200 So this is a grand more than that uh, off, you know, off the shelf price. And that's about £500 more than the new American originals. Yes. So it's kind of, it's not anywhere like custom shop price, but it's a, it's a premium guitar compared to a you know, off the end of the line one. Yes, yeah. I mean, I honestly think that as a working guitar, I think we used that term earlier, that this will cover what you need it to cover. And you yeah. kind of know that you've got pickups and electronics that are good enough for Eric Johnson. Well, exactly. <laughs> so Eric said to us that he, he when he's using a, a new guitar, a modern guitar, he's falling with this in favour of his solid body uh, mm. a, a, a signature model. So, right. you know, if, he, if he's, he's erring towards this one uh, as a live guitarist, then obviously it means he likes it too. And it's not just a kind of, I don't know, a marketing exercise, which often these things can be possibly yeah. Yeah. cynically viewed as. Mm. No, I'd definitely say having played, you know, quite a lot of strats and having played them loudly as well, yeah. Yeah. that I am feeling a yeah. difference and I'm hearing it in the room here, so I hope yeah. that's coming across. Mm. Thank you.